Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the ICFF Youth Indigenous Film Series webinar. My name is Natalie Cuerta and I will be your guide throughout today's event. On behalf of the ICFF Youth and the TCDSB, we are so pleased to have you here with us today. Today's webinar presents the theme, Express Yourself Through Culture, and includes three sections that each connect cinema, culture, identity, and today's film of focus, Kessie Pan. I would like to begin by introducing and welcoming someone very important to this project, Superintendent of Student Success, Gina Giuliano Morello. Good afternoon, students, staff, and panel members. I want to thank all of you for coming here today and joining us to be part of this wonderful experience. The Indigenous Film Series panel discussion based on a wonderful film you watched, Kwisipan. We hope you enjoyed the movie as much as we did. It's a wonderful story about two young girls and their journey towards adulthood and all that it entails in terms of relationships and interactions with people of different cultures, backgrounds and experiences. The story not only helps us to broaden our understanding of the indigenous culture, but also challenges us to reflect on our own experiences and interactions with others. I would like to take this opportunity to sincerely thank the members of the Indigenous community, Diane and Clayton, for joining us today. I think that you will really enjoy listening to them. So wonderful that you could be here with us. I would like to thank ICFF for partnering with us once more in making this event happen. On that note, I will now pass it on to Joseph Cafiso, the director of the ICFF Youth, to say a few words. Well, hello everyone, and thank you, Gina, for the warm introduction. As director of the SFF Youth Film Festival, I am extremely happy to be here with you all today as we celebrate our eighth edition and explore a very important topic in Canada's history and culture. And it's time that we begin section one of today's event on cinema. The ICFF Youth is an international film festival that uses the art form of cinema to teach students about a variety of cultures and languages, ranging from French, Italian, Spanish, Cantonese, Mandarin, and this year, of course, indigenous culture. We're all part of our cultural framework, our families, our friends, and all that we do with them and all that we believe in are part of our culture. Cinema tells stories about culture, our own and that of others. And through international cinema, we can learn so much through stories filled with adventure, drama, and comedy. Aside from exploring new cultures, our goal is, as a film festival, is to teach students about the art of filmmaking through the elements of film, which are its actors, set, cinematography, sound, lighting, special effects, and of course, the plot. So this year's edition is titled ICFF Youth Indigenous Film Series. The program features three international films that focus on the study of indigenous culture, such as uh, White Fang, uh, The Legend of Sarila, and Quesipon. Overall, highlights, uh, all of these films, uh, uh, highlight the importance of indigenous cultures and the ways in which their values are expressed and how we're able to learn these values through the art form of cinema. Now, the film that has brought us to today's discussion is the multi-award winning Canadian drama, Quesipon, directed by Miriam Vero. This film was inspired by the critically acclaimed novel written by Naomi Fontaine, also called Quesipon, and strongly represents Inu culture. This film, is a true coming of age story of, about the replaceable bond between two young female friends that was set and filmed on an Inu reserve in Northern Quebec. The film gives the audience a beautiful and honest perspective about identity, clash of cultures, freedom, and the courage to be yourself. But before we go any further, I'm pleased to show you a special video message that we received from the main actress of Chrissy Pond. 
Sharon Fontaine Hishpatao. Let's take a look at her message together. Bonjour, c'est Sharon Fontaine Ishpatao. Je viens de la communauté de Washat Makmaliotenam. Je suis l'interprète de Mikwan dans Kwesipan. Donc, Kwesipan, le film a été tourné sur euh, la réserve de Washat Makmaliotenam sur la côte nord à cette île. C'est un film qui a été inspiré librement du roman euh, du même nom de Naomi Fontaine. Euh, ça raconte l'histoire de deux meilleurs amis qui grandissent ensemble sur la réserve, Mikwan et Shanice. En grandissant, elles se promettent de ne jamais se quitter jusqu'à l'aube de leurs 17 ans où euh, Mikwan s'amourage d'un garçon blanc et se met à rêver d'une vie en dehors de la réserve, ce qui met à l'épreuve leur amitié. Well, now it's time to hear from someone incredibly important to the film, director Mayor Vero, who sat down with ICFF French creator Licia Big Lens for an exclusive interview. Let's take a look together. Bonjour, Myriam. Hi. Est-ce que tu pourrais nous donner un, un résumé bref? Là, on ne veut pas dévoiler trop, trop l'histoire du film. C'est l'histoire de deux meilleurs amis. C'est l'histoire d'une amitié. C'est l'histoire de deux euh, jeunes filles, euh, on les voit enfants et elles se promettent, euh, elles sont tellement amies et après on les revoit à l'adolescence et la vie les a forgées de façon différente. Elles sont toujours aussi amies, mais la vie, les, la force des choses les sépare. Est-ce qu'il y a des thèmes importants que tu voulais faire ressortir dans ce film ou un message important? Mmh. C'est de ne pas euh, donner des réponses toutes faites aux gens, mais de leur les faire réfléchir. Et je pense que toute la situation euh, de, de, et, de, et de, le contraste entre les deux personnages, euh, il y a peut-être plusieurs façons de vivre son identité, l'identité personnelle et collective. Et je ne voulais pas donner de réponse, je voulais seulement que les gens réfléchissent sur ces questions-là qui sont complexes. What an incredible interview this was. Uh, Miriam is an extremely talented director. It's now time to introduce today's special guest. He's a Canadian cinematographer and the director of photography for Croissipan. I'm pleased to welcome to our virtual stage, Nicholas Canicioni. Welcome, Nicholas. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi. So, Nicholas, uh, uh, please tell us uh, what is involved in the role of a director of photography in the making of a movie. What types of decisions and ideas are you responsible for? Uh, but, uh, first of all, uh, are you able to see me or not? Uh, Nicholas, your screen is black. If you could turn on your video camera for us. Yeah. Hmm. I'm just looking for the <laughs> okay, the video. Uh, what is the problem? It, it's a, a left um, section of the screen. There is a stop video section. Maybe there is something blocking your camera potentially. The, oh. the camera oh. is black, but your video is on. Okay, no, the, the camera is, uh, is not blocked. Maybe it's broken, I don't know. Okay, Nicholas, no problem. So we will talk and uh, <laughs> you will not see me. And, no uh, no I problem. Want, I want to say, uh, sorry for my English, I'm not uh, used to talk a lot in English, but uh, I hope you will understand. <laughs> It's no problem. So uh, thank you again for joining us. And uh, I will uh, just uh, repeat the question I asked you. Yes. Uh, if you could please tell us what is involved in the role of uh, director of photography in, making of a, in the making of a movie. And what types of decisions and ideas are you responsible for? Mm -hmm. well, the first, first uh, step is to read the script uh, and to um, to, to uh, talk to the director ab about his uh, intentions. It, it's a lot about communication with the director. Uh, so with, uh, with Miriam, we, we uh, talked a lot about our, our aesthetical, uh, the aesthetical aspect of the film. 
uh, many years in advance. We, are, we had a lot of ideas, but at the end, um, when we are confronted to the reality of the, the actors and the locations, we, that is when all our ideas um, um, are taking shape, you know, with the reality of the, of the locations. Because even if we dream about a special uh, mise en scène uh, in an abstract way, uh, at the end we have a lot of we have a limited days of shooting. We have um, the like in in Kwesipan, uh, it was at the end. Principal shooting was at the end of fall, so the la the the daylight is really um, the sun is really low and the day are really short. So we need to light uh, in different lights. So if see, th th there is all these kind of technical aspects that we, we, we need to think about. So th there's a lot of, uh, of, of steps. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, my next question is uh, like, in your opinion, how important is uh, film cinematography to the development of the plot? Like in, in, in the case of Quesipon, how did cinematography help us set the story? Mm. The cinematography in uh, Quesipon and in all the movies normally it, it, um, add a lot to the, it, because the film is it's about sound and images. And, and we, yes, we have actors also and, and a story to tell. So th there is the, the point of view what you see, what you don't see, the kind of lighting or not, uh, uh, is it natural or not? So in, in Kwesipan, um, one of the main idea was to give freedom to the actors because they were non-actors so, and we don't want to ask them to be, to have too much precision in, in a technical way. We want to give give them freedom. So the, the, the light was um, al always outside of the house. You know, it, like uh, there was not a lot of technical stuff to look around when you are, you are an actor. So there was no uh, there was no oppression about the lights and all that. You 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 feel free when you don't see uh, too much technique around you. So th there was that. Um, and uh, another thing about Kwesipan and, and freedom for the, for the actors was to shoot the, um, when there was a lot of actors in the same scene, there was two cameras to, to catch the performance uh, in the first takes without doing, without repositioning the cameras. So, so the, the, so the, with the non-actors, often the, the, the maximum energy is, that, is at the beginning of the take. So we need to be ready. And two, two cameras helps for that. I, I see. Well, in, in a way, you've, you've answered also my next question, which is uh, uh, regarding specific challenges in the making of Quesipan. Uh -huh. So based on that, did you have to make some specific uh, artistic uh, um, decisions, directions that uh, were taken during the uh, filming of uh, Quesipan? Uh, yeah, so yes, I already answer <laughs> without, without uh, but yeah, the, it was, a, yeah, there was the, the thing about the sun, the, the short days of the end of the, of the fall and beginning of the winter. So th there was this challenge to, to keep continuity even when the sun is, is uh, down uh, in artificial ways with our big lights. Uh, th there was the, the, the two camera, um, two camera um, shooting that, that normally we use just one camera. So, so that was a challenge because there, was, there is compromise when you do that. Um, uh, about the challenges, there was there was the the winter time and when it's cold, yeah, the equipment is more um, it's more difficult. Uh, the manipulation of the equipment, um, but but it was it was always fun time and it was always a nice experience and great team around us. It's it's teamwork, uh, and Miriam was 
at the center of, of that. She, she's a, a good leader and, and we can speak to her and, and we can express ourselves. At the end, she, she will make decisions, uh, the, the final decisions, but, but it was a great, great uh, uh, teamwork, this Kwesipan uh, movie. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for joining us today and giving us an idea what it means to be a director of photography. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. And well, students, uh, um, it's been a pleasure speaking uh, to you all for the section one of today's seminar. And uh, thank you for listening so closely. I now leave the virtual stage to our moderator, Natalie. Thank you, Joseph, and thank you, Nicholas, for joining us today on Zoom. This concludes section one of today's webinar on cinema. And next, we will begin section two that will focus on identity. It's now my pleasure to introduce ICFF French curator, Licha Biglins. Hello, everyone. My name is Licha Biglins, and it's a pleasure to be here with you all today. I'm very excited to present a special section of today's presentation on identity. Now, what exactly is identity? Identity is the qualities, beliefs, personality, looks, and or expressions that make up a person or a group. And today, we will take a look into the deeper meaning of identity, which is, who are you? The way you think about yourself, the way you are viewed by the world, and the characteristics that define you. Each of us have our own ident individual identities, but we, each of us have, I'm so sorry, each of us are, have our own individual identities, but we each have a culture that we identify with. Expressing your culture and identity can be done in a number of unique ways. For example, as a film festival, we express our identity through the art form of cinema. Identity is very important to Indigenous people as they express their culture through different art forms such as painting and sculpting, also in different symbols, clothing, language, daily life, and sacred traditions. Identifying as an Indigenous person brings additional layers, complexities, and considerations. The added layers of identity can include which nation, band, clan, tribal council or treaty office they belong to, and whether or not they live in their home community or have migrated to, urban, to an urban center. It is my pleasure to show you three famous artists who are Innu and Inuit descent that each express their cultures in unique ways. Natasha Canapé Fontaine is an artist, poet, and writer of Innu descent from Pesamit, Quebec. She is also a visual artist and activist for indigenous people and environmental rights. She became known for her poetry slams in 12, 2012 in Quebec and has been dubbed as the territorial slammer. Natasha has three critically acclaimed collections of poetry with her first published poetry book called Notre pas dans mon âme avec tes chaussures. This came out in 2012. She writes with emotion and voices and with emotion and voices for both revolution and love. Let's take a look at her clip. Oh, well. Laissons à la terre ce qui appartient à la terre. Le message est immense et il traversera les terres. Et la vie, et la vibration, et la vision de nos grands-pères. Construisons les relations qui bâtiront entre les peuples et les nations le sensible fil de l'intime conviction. Waben no dayat, de melden et luyan. Waben no dayat, kahagat no nint jikod nat mudeyan. Noach pogohel de mon. Shawit, also known as Jean Edez Bourdage Aster, 
is a Canadian singer-songwriter of Inuit descent who produces music in the Inu language. He was raised as a Francophone, but he decided to reconnect with his Indigenous heritage in his teens. Shaowit has many Spotify singles and has received multiple awards, such as the Indigenous Music Award in 2018 for Best Indigenous Language Album. He has also won the Canadian Folk Music Award for Indigenous Songwriter of the Year in 2018 and continues to inspire young Indigenous youth as a spokesperson. Let's take a listen to his music. Shaowit. Akupekusia. Best Inuit Indigenous Language or Francophone Album. Originally from Northern Quebec, the singer-songwriter Shawit sings honest and committed songs that ingeniously combine his native language and traditional rhythms with other popular trends. First, I want to thank Chemindu. God, it's him that gave me the, the gift of uh, singing. Sheena Novalinga is a 22-year-old Canadian Inuk throat singer from Inuk descent, Montreal, Quebec. She has become Instagram famous after a viral video of her throat singing with her mom. Throat singing is an Indigenous practice that has been a part of Inuit culture for thousands of years. And Sheena Nova is currently using TikTok and Instagram to show her cultural pride and is using her fame for charity. She helped raise nearly $12,500 to create individual care packages with essentials for Indigenous women living at a local shelter in Quebec. Let's watch her video together. Hi, my name is Shaina Navalinga. I am 22 years old and I throat sing with my mom on TikTok. <laughs> when you sing from your throat and from your heart uh, it's between two women facing each other and we imitate the sound of nature the sound of animals and we really connect with our spirituality with our voice with um, the vibration that we are creating <laughs> Since we just grew this platform very recently, we're like, why don't we just use it for a good cause, use it for, um, to help our people. It's so wonderful to see a young generation of artists who are incredibly passionate about sharing the history knowledge, traditions, and beautiful teachings of their Inu and Inuit cultures with the rest of the world. By using modern day technology, technology and a contemporary approach, these artists also help us to better understand their cultures, identity, and identity, whether it be Inu, Inuit, First Nation, or Métis. Thank you everyone for listening to section two of today's event, and I leave you to the virtual stage and to Natalie Kwercha. Thank you, Licha, very much for presenting section two of today's webinar on identity. Now, students, following this final section, we will begin our Q&A and open the floor to questions. If you have a question, please write it down and we invite you to paste it directly into our chat room. It's now time to begin our final section of today's webinar that will focus on the film Kwesipan and its important themes. It's my pleasure to introduce the TCDSB panel of Indigenous teachers, knowledge keepers, and elders. Let's take a look at the panelists. Derek Chen, Superintendent of Equity, Diversity, Indigenous Education. 
Frank Pio, Indigenous Education Resource Teacher, TCDSB. Diane Montreul, METI Knowledge Keeper, TCDSB. Elder Clayton Shirt, First Nations Elder, TCDSB. What a wonderful panel of speakers we have with us today. Thank you all for joining us on our virtual stage. It's now my pleasure to leave the floor to Superintendent Derek Chen, who will lead our final discussion. Welcome, Derek. Thank you so much, Natalie, and the whole ICFF team for inviting us. Uh, we are so happy to be here to share in this uh, our thoughts on this wonderful, wonderful film. Uh, and before we get started, I would just like to do our land acknowledgement. Out of our deep respect for Indigenous peoples in Canada, we acknowledge that all Toronto Catholic District School Board properties are situated upon traditional territories of the Anishinaabek, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Wendat peoples. We also acknowledge the land covered by Treaty 13 is held by the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, and Toronto is subject to the Dish with One Spoon Covenant. We also recognize the contributions and enduring presence of all First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples in Ontario and the rest of Canada. So I'm pleased to uh, be the moderator of this panel. And uh, what I will do is I'm going to ask a few questions of, of, of our panelists here. Um, so my first question is uh, about the film. We see a glimpse of what living on a reserve is like in the film. So, uh, I've, I've been thinking about this and what do Indigenous people actually think of living on a reserve? And do you think that the film is an accurate portrayal of life on a reserve? I'd like to go first to uh, First Nation Elder Clayton Shirt. No, I'm there. Uh, do you hear me? Yes, we're good, Clayton. Okay, yeah. Um, well, I watched the film. I just say it's a it's a it's a it's a wonderful film, and I was I was thinking about that a lot. And I was, um, I've I am from a well, I belong to a band, a reserve, uh, Treaty Six, and reserve life from coast to coast is uh, it it varies, um, and some are extremely in, in in impoverished conditions, and some are okay. So what I saw in that re in the film was things were okay. Uh, there was a standard of living, and there was a struggle, but also a remote community. So uh, living on a reserve, um, I liked what I saw in the film. I, I, I appreciate it. It, uh, it was uh, authentic. I thought it was. Um, and um, yeah, it was uh, just a glimpse of, of uh, reserve life, just like a very small part of it and everything and all that. So yeah, I, I, I liked what I saw. Yeah, that's just Thank me so personally. Yeah. yeah, no, that's great, Clay. And absolutely, I guess the focus is really just on that glimpse part, right? Yeah. Uh, and now I'd like to go to Knowledge Keeper, Diane Montoy. Hi, Derek. Um, on a Métis lens, I think the, the movie is very well done and I really enjoyed it. Uh, it gives a lot of good teaching and understanding of the kind of life we could have in a reserve. Like, like Clayton has said, there's sometimes poverty and there's sometimes richness. I have visited many uh, reserve. I have friends that lives in a reserve and some that move out from the reserve and things like this. And, and some of the reserve are confronted accordingly of the spiritual life and the non-spiritual life and things like this. Some are more like Catholic and less um, indigenous in the spirituality, but it gives a real good glance on uh, what's going on and the friendship with these two wonderful young women. Thank you so much, Diane. And now we're going to go to indigenous lead teacher for the TCDSB, Mr. Frank Pio. Thanks, Derek. I don't know if you can see me. Uh, you can? Yes, we can. Yeah. All right. Um, I actually lived on uh, Northern Community Reserve in, on Manitoulin Island, and it's uncanny how the, uh, the film reflected what I saw around me, the same kind of houses, uh, depending on the economic uh, conditions of the people living on the reserves. Most of them would have those houses. There are, there are government uh, houses, uh, very, uh, they don't have to pay uh, very little for them. But I found it interesting that uh, what the film tried to portray, and as uh, Clayton alluded to, was it's a glimpse of it, but it was quite an accurate glimpse 
of life on a reserve. But what I want to emphasize is the idea of how important community is among Indigenous peoples on these reserves. And the family structure is very, very strong, where the elders take an integral part in raising the children and becoming part of the community. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And would anyone like to answer the question in terms of, uh, I know that the, the reserves were uh, uh, born out of the Indian Act. What, what are the thoughts currently about reserves in general, like the concept of reserves? What is the feeling of Indigenous people? Uh, um, you want to start, Clay? Well, I, I mean that's a that's a that's a that's a that's a big question. It's a loaded, there. Yeah, I know it is. Very, very, Sorry, is it too too much? Very big question. <laughs> yeah. So I, I I just start you know the, the, the history of the students to know that the reserves were not we were, they weren't supposed to be here for this long. That's the reality, right? They were supposed to be, but they were supposed to phase. We were supposed to be phased out. We were supposed to integrate into this uh, dominant culture. Right. And it didn't work. It hasn't worked out that way. Right? And so, the, you know, the, the, the government at the time, the Canadian government gave the, this, this land that they didn't want. Right. And so they said, this is where you're going to go force migration from the traditional territories. And the Inu have, uh, you know, have uh, the Métis, everybody has gone through that. And so and so they adapted to these places, and, and it's only very, very, very recently that they're allowed to organize, that they're allowed to do these things to, to all, and, and everything. So it was, it was um, a, a pain, it's kind of like an internment camp. That's what reserves were at the beginning, right? Here, here, a, a whole race of people, including the Inu, including the, all of us, where we're, 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 we're supposed to... Um, we're totally in the, we're independent people and now we're totally dependent now on this foreign power right at the time so and then there was all of that so that's yeah that's very you have to make that very clear when you look at a reserve system and the whole thing and, the, and it came out of the indian act etc so but again i just say it's a very loaded question and, and, and um but I, I, I can't think of another word, but I know this word gets thrown around a lot, uh, resilience, right? Resilience of uh, the, the communities, the people, and holding on to their traditions. And very, very, a lot of them were underground for a very long time. I really don't know anything about Inu culture, but I know, I know they went through the same struggles and they're trying to hold on to their identity and all this. And so the reserve system, uh, uh, weren't, wasn't very, um, it, it didn't succeed in what they tried to do, right? And so, and it's very important to understand that. And there, so when you look at it, uh, and it's like, because I, I, you know, I have, you know, I belong to Reserve and um, Treaty 6 and uh, Saddle Lake. And it's really, the, the conditions are, are very, they're bad. It's just, you know, and, 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 and so, so when I look at it, I'm like, okay, well, I, I see our people, that resilience coming again of the generations before me are, uh, did all this work for me so I could know who I am as a person, as a human being, as a Mishnabi man, et cetera, and all that. And against tremendous odds, right? So it, it's very important for people to understand that. And I think the film kind of touches on that a little bit because I, I remember seeing the, 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 the crosses, right, in there and all of this Catholicism and everything just sitting there and the, the, the funeral, et cetera, and everything. And it shows, it's kind of showing its impact, right, very subtle. I thought that was very subtle, and, but it was it's like, like, the, like the DP was saying, it's, it's all about the images, right, and all of that. So I, I found that very uh, interesting, and I thought it was very accurate. But again, but you got to know the history, right? Yeah. yeah. So, anyways, I, yeah. thank you for picking up on the on images of Catholicism too, which was so I found so fascinating in the film as well. Uh, yeah. Do uh, Frank and Diane, did you want to add anything else? Yeah, Otherwise, I, I'll go to the next question. No, I just well, quickly well, want to no, say. No, oh, yeah, sorry, no, Diane. Go ahead. No, no, Diane. Go ahead. Well, 
Yeah. On the Métis side, we have a way to look at different things because we're not people that have been in the reserve and everything, but what Clayton has shared, it's very accurate. And there, there's a tension in a reserve, you know, because there's a struggle about poverty. Uh, and, and the goal was with the Indian Act is that all of us have to bury things to save the, the medicine. And then you have the residential school that has divided the, the people in their community. And, and the goal was to control, but also to to kill the Indian and us and things like this, no matter like if you were in reserve or out reserve. And when I look about the family knot that always been very important in our spirituality, because if you go back to the tradition, you have the parents know what to do with their for, firstborn and their children, and then the grandparents come over and teach our young people and everything. And, but you could feel the intensity and the relationship between uh, Shanice and Mikwan because they carry both. One has an opportunity to get out and one wants to stick in because that's what she grew up into it. Right. Yeah. And I'm sure Frank will probably yeah. add other things. Also. Thank you. Just Frank in a few, few, a few seconds to add. Yeah. I just, I just want to give a bit of historical uh, context. It's 155 years since the reserves were enacted. And the initial reason for it was to access the resources and the material that was on the land. So they literally displaced whole communities and put them on reserves and so they could have access to the land that had the resources in it. That was a major part of creating those reserves. So it's important to understand it was about politics, it was about power, and it was about money. And Beautiful. the Indigenous people suffered because of that. Yep. Thank you for that historical context, Frank. Our next question, every single film has conflict in it, otherwise it would be very interesting. In this film, we see one major conflict is the tension that exists between friends. Uh, when Miquan falls romantically for a white boy, her friend Shanice is upset that Miquan is per pursuing this relationship. What makes a relationship between uh, an indigenous person and Inu in this case, uh, and a, a white person so challenging. Uh, I'm asking, so we'll start again with uh, Clay. Um, I, I was kind of hoping you wouldn't, but anyways, uh, I'm okay with that. <laughs> it was just like, but I can really identify with that because I, I, I've been married for 30 years to a, a, a beautiful Italian woman, so. And that's why I was kind of like this Italian film festival and, and everything. And so it just sort of fits and, and, she, and she's just, and so we, we kind of went through that in the beginning, both sides are like, well, who's that guy? You know, what, what, we don't know nothing about that. And, and, and if what they did know, it, it was, they, they, they knew nothing and it was all fault. It was all it was very ignorant and et cetera and everything. So we had to, it was a learning curve for both of us, uh, our families, and both sides so i could see that in the film and it is a struggle for a lot of uh, uh people who want to uh go into these other cultures other identities and everything and it's it, and i really liked how the film did that it shared that and showed that and the struggles that um that they had uh feelings for each other it's frozen oh no i think is Clay frozen? Yeah. Oh, I think he is. Yeah. Um, maybe we'll go to Diane then. Sure. Uh, I think uh, I really enjoy that relationship. You know, because uh, it is it is very important. Myself, I'm in a relationship uh, since over 18 years, and my partner is from the island. So we have that kind of connection with tribal things, uh, but we also have our own culture, of course, and we live respectfully from each other. Um, you know, today when we look at uh, young people, they say, I have 4,000 friends on Facebook. No, there's a difference. You have acquaintance. That doesn't mean that it's true friendship. A true friendship is someone like these two young girls that are going through crisis and yes, you can do this and can do that. But you know, this is true friendship. A friend for me, it is someone that will be on your side when obstacle come and you fall down. And this is really what true friendship is. And I really love to see that. They are there for each other and we will always be channel. 
I carry both inside of me. I carry the indigenous and the white side. It took me many years to really learn to how to balance. I come from a broken family in certain ways. So I was broken inside. I had to go for my own healing. And today I'm totally balanced with myself. So you will always be challenged, but that's the gift of life in certain yeah. ways. We learn and grow from it. Absolutely. Thank you, Diane. Frank? Mm -hmm. Yeah, quickly. Um, for me, it was more. It's really a reflection of society as a whole. This relationship is be between indigenous culture, which one of the girls represented, and the non-indigenous was the boy. But I, I see that as Canada. This, it, it really was a reflection of what's going on in this country. Is this really? How do you? How does this country uh, accommodate another culture that has been here before? Has a lot of value. And they're trying to create this unity somehow. And there's this constant struggle over 500 years since uh, the, the settlers came here. So I found that an interesting as a microcosm of the larger picture of how the relationship is with Canada and indigenous peoples and this constant back and forth. And, and one day, as Justin Sinclair says of the TRC, that there will be a balance in seven, seven more generations but it really depends on this relationship. He, we, the TRC can't be accomplished all the calls to action without the non-Indigenous peoples being in this relationship because it's about our relationship and that the film was a strong message of how relationships are created when there are differences and the ongoing struggles to, to keep that balance. I love how you said that, Frank. I mean, and I think it really is about that re reconciliation. I mean, which is part of that truth right. and reconciliation, right? Which is where the 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 the, the that very deep and um, you know conflicted relationship between indigenous yeah. people and and settlers have always been, right? And and it's and to to come to that is is extremely difficult and challenging. But I know that the healing has always been. Uh, there as, as something that uh, has, has been a desire, right? So I'm hoping we have a, a time for a couple more questions here. Uh, my next one is about um, an important theme about the film is, is, is female empowerment. We actually have two incredibly strong female characters and as well as a mother figure who is also incredible. I wanted to ask you just a very simple question, Miquan, what are your thoughts about the character of Miquan, the main character in the film? Uh, we'll start with Diane then this time. Okay, thanks. Uh, I think Miquan has uh, had an opportunity to go out of the reserve to observe and uh, being invited to discover a little bit of the white culture. And for me, when I look at her, I think she's a very strong young woman that wants more than the limitation of some reserve. I see her more as a go-getter. She wants to get out of the box. She will probably keep where she come from, of course, because we all do that. She will also keep the tradition, her family, her friends and everything. She's not interested to kill the relationship that she has with uh, her friend Shanice, of course, uh, but she's someone that see opportunities and she's inspired by possibilities and everything. So she will be able to overpass, be successful, not meaning that you live in a reserve that you're not successful, but she see other things that the reserve cannot give it to her. Yeah, That's I love that. That's fascinating. Um, Clay? Thoughts well, I'm, on back. I'm, I'm back. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> We're glad to have you back. <laughs> um, yeah, I just sort of echo what Diane's saying. It's just, I thought she was in a very powerful, um, I'll just say, I'll say in my language, Nishnabe Kwe. And, um, and I just, I was so impressed with her. I knew going into the film that these weren't uh, actors, right? These were these, and, and, and she just kind of, you could see that in it, but you also, you could see that she was playing, she was uh, being herself. This was authentic. And it was just, and it just, it just, you could see it and you could hear it you could, you know, and it was just like, wow. And I, I really thought that was a very a, a empowering for all women, right? And, I was yeah. just, I was, and, and, and it was just like amazed in, in both. And, um, and I was just so impressed with that. And uh, so, yeah, and, and it's just in, in the whole idea of just going out there. And so many of us have done that. We had to do that, to, just to go outside 
the you know, the box with Diana saying the reserve system and go out and explore this this dominant culture and and sort of interpret our our cultures our ways of being through the, you know through the arts and this is why indigenous people are so uh, uh, good at the arts because to me and most of us what is art it's the human spirit expressing itself right and so we've done and so in you art. Uh, uh, Indigenous art, Métis art, you know, just love it. And so you see so many of us thriving in there against, even against all these odds and, you know, it, it, with the whole thing going on. So I saw that to the word, the power of words, you know, and that was the, 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 the very nice at the end. And, and so, and then I also, and then the other part, the other one, I just want a little bit about the, the, the other, the other young woman there and, and how she, so okay this is my life this is my reality and then at the end she's with her children and she's doing the best she can as often as she can as frequently as she can she's just doing that to to and, and make a better life for those those little ones All right and i saw you could see that and i was just like wow and so the two, the two sides the two realities that uh, and, and i was just like and i was so impressed with that and it was so accurate because so many of us have had to do that that's what I liked about it, you know. So these people, the book, etc., the director, uh, you know, did their research, <laughs> right? They did their work, and I was just like, I was very impressed because I was kind of, I was kind of iffy about this whole thing. And on the other hand, I don't speak French, so it was, it's subtitle movies, and I don't see that many subtitle movies. But you know, we're all under this pandemic, so we're all watching movies now, right? And so, and we're watching more movies than ever, so. And it's very, very, and I love that, and, uh, and I thought that was great. So, yeah. Clay, I love how you said that these are two both really powerful girls, main characters, with completely different pathways in life, right? Yeah. And, and and yet they're still both so incredibly inspirational in their own ways, right? So, uh, yeah, Frank? Absolutely. This uh, uh, final thing, uh, a bit alluding to Clay about the final, what impressed me most was her little speech or that uh, uh she gave to the to the group of people. What really uh, struck me was when she said, "One must first know captivity to conceive what freedom is," and that really struck me as a powerful piece for her to become aware of that. Because it the bottom line is you have to go through the belly of the whale to come out on the other side, and because she would never have understood what freedom was if she hadn't been in this, quote, captive uh, environment. And that is something you need to understand, in my uh, opinion, is the idea of what the Indigenous peoples are going through over the course of this time. Is for them to understand what freedom is, is something that is very vital for them. They're always, as Clay said, trying to go outside the box because they know what it's like and they've, ex they've existed under a very authoritarian, uh, subjugated environment. So for them to have that breath of fresh air, it takes a lot of strength and courage as Miquan ha uh, has tried and has succeeded in the end. And it's through the power of word that really struck me so much in this film about how that can be achieved. And it's it just a very poignant moment when she uh, said those words for me. That was a great quote, Frank. I love that. Uh, and the power of the word, the power of the poetry is so, so incredible in this film. We talked earlier a little bit about reconciliation. And um, that's my final question for you for the panel today is really about what can we as non-Indigenous people, as settlers, uh, do to help with uh, reconciliation, with true, authentic reconciliation. Uh, and I think we have lost, oh, Diane's coming back here now. But I, um, I'll, I'll go to you, Clay, if you don't mind first. Uh, what, what are your suggestions? Well, I mean, we, we talk about this a lot, about, and I talk about this a lot, reconciliation. Um, well, first of all, you have to, we know what we want, right? As Indigenous people, as Inu people, as Métis people as people, uh, first peoples. Um, and that's uh, for for people to listen, right? right? And you have to listen and you know, to build something, 
right? And we, we know what we want. So if, for example, I say, uh, you know, I run a sweat lodge. I know how to make a sweat lodge. Do you know how to make a sweat lodge? No, right? So you, you know, you, you listen and learn how to say, this is what we want. This is, and, and you listen. That's the first thing, right? Listening. And understanding that um, it, it's, it's really important to listen, but also to um, not over talk, right? Um, and to have that respect and um, to build a relationship, it takes two. And, and so to me, that's a start, right? And, and also to reconcile with, I, I say this a lot, and I, I mean, no disrespect to anyone. I, as Indigenous people, as Inuit people, and I just say this to, to the youth, we don't really have to reconcile with anything. But the impressions left by done by colonialism, right? And so what I mean by that is those impressions left in our minds, right? Those, 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 those things, the, what I, those negative impressions left, right? And you saw that in the film, right? And so that's what I say. We all we have to reconcile with that with our with ourselves again, because there was a time when we knew who we were, right? We're the Inu. We're the we are the we are the Nishinaabe. We are the Lakotas. We are the Cree. We are etc. Right? We know who we are. The people, right? The human beings, and all of this. And so there was a balance. And so so we're in the process of reconcile with that. So when I look at that, and then what I'm talking about is just friendly relations again with the self learning again and so and i saw that and, and it was just and i could see that i just point this out in the film i love the part where the the parents come right and then they bring home the food and and then the, and i'm pretty sure it was a it was an elk and they're skinning that elk in the front of the kitchen and i just love that and that that to me that's part of the you know that's their culture that's their being and they're they're, they're holding on and the father was you know it was very the strong silent type and he was and he was you know, you know, butchering that animal, and they're in the communities watching, right? And they're learning, right? And I thought that was brilliant, and it just just a glimpse again in in you ways of being, right? The old ways of doing things, and a relationship with the land, and the respect for those animals, and the whole lot. And I just saw that. That's what it reminded me of. And so, again, to me, if you're going to talk about reconciliation, that's what he's doing, right? friendly relations again with the land, even though he's in this dominant culture and everything and all this stuff. And, and, and the youth are kind of trying to figure out how to uh, uh, live in these two worlds, right? What they call two I'd see in now, right? You know, this world, the, the dominant world and that old ways of doing things, right? And, and you could see, and then the, the kids were all like, and the, the grandma's there laughing and, you know, they're all a community, a family, a nation, right? A tribe, right? doing this and i thought that was nice to see and it was just the, the subtlety of that all you know and probably everybody's probably a little most people were like well what, what's he doing there why would you bring a whole animal into your kitchen <laughs> right <laughs> right but that's the way it is that's you know, it was just they would do that and he was teaching by observation right and the kids were learning and all that so to me that's reconciliation part of it right friendly relations began with the land and so that's part of it. And so for outsiders to watch and learn and say, okay, they know what they need, right? To sustain their lives and to in all of this. So we need to listen, to be an ally, to be a good ally, to listen. I'll use that word ally, but to be a good ally, to listen and pay attention and see what they need. And so I can support that, right? Not to go in there and fix it, right? We, we yeah. don't need anybody there to fix it for us. We know what we want. We know what we need for a healthy, good life for the next generations. Right. So to me, that's that's uh, reconciliation, right? I love how you brought that scene up though, because that is something that's uh, for us, what I think as non-Indigenous people quite eye-opening. And so to learn a little bit more about those family traditions, the culture, something that is we're, we're exposed to, it will help us, I think also in reconciliation is just yeah. more of an understanding. Uh, so thank you, Diane. 
Yes, that was a great sharing, Clayton. Uh, it's all about, uh, for me, it's a reconciliation is with myself first, uh, because I cannot reconcile with other if, I, if I'm if i not there with myself also. But uh, Clayton is right, because it's all about sharing with families and friends. That brought me back uh, when my grandmother would make us uh, having ceremonies and everything, and she would bring the food together to be all one people together and share and do the storytelling and, and, and many other things. But the main thing is, is how, uh, like Clayton has said, is to build relationship, uh, to care for each other, to have respect for each other, and to really um, establish relationship with the environment, the animals, everybody. Without any relationship, we're not there. And, and, and what colonialism has done, unfortunately, it has divided us even amongst us. And this is now we have to work the healing process on all these kind of things. And it's very important. Healing is very important. What my grandmother has done also with me and, and others, she makes sure that I would understand that other culture from other country have faith to inquire about the faith, to have a better understanding, a better knowledge and a better respect of each other. For me, I am a very positive person. I see that this, I have seen the destruction. Now, what could we do to move forward? And I'm someone that has a lot of hope for the healing of all of us that have been going through and, and, and for the people that uh, try to understand our world. And that's why uh, it, everything is important in that movie also. That hope, that hope that you're always having, Diane, it's so important. Yeah. Uh, Frank, final this, word? Yeah, final thing is just one of the commissioners, one of the main commissioners, Justice Sinclair in the uh, Truth and Reconciliation said very poignantly that this can't, reconciliation can't happen without us. And he called us, as Clay used the word, allies. We have to see ourselves as allies in a relationship that both uh, Diane and uh, Clayton are are alluding to a friendly relationship where we're working together, not uh, competing, not not interfering in our lives, but working together on this on the on the same journey uh, as, as Canadians in a country that is uh, deserving of the uh, the culture and the knowledge of Indigenous peoples. They have so much to learn. We have so much to learn from them. But the word is allies, and I say this to the youth watching right now don't think that you can't do anything because you can you're an ally in working with indigenous peoples you may think you're not but you are and um i i commend you for being here today watching this and i encourage you to uh to work with indigenous peoples when you have an opportunity and see yourself as an ally thank you Thank you. Um, Frank, you're always so passionate. I really appreciate that. Um, and if that takes us to the end of the formal questions here. I think I'm passing it on to Natalie. I, I, from Just for myself, for, for this part where I've asked some hard-hitting questions. <laughs> uh, thank you for a answering so honestly and authentically, as you always do. I always learn so much from all three of you. Really appreciate it. And I hope our audience has also uh, been able to uh, enjoy um, our conversation, our dialogue here, and, and maybe this will move them to listening more and being that ally. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Derek. And thank you so much to our panelists, each and every one of you, for sharing such knowledge and insight on these important themes represented in Kesepan, the film. Now, students, it's time to open the floor to you and your questions. Earlier, I asked you to paste your questions in our Q&A chat, and now is the time to do so if you have one. I'm pleased to invite back to our panel, Licha Biglins, who will be accepting questions based on the making of the film. Licha, please join us on our panel and we will begin taking some questions. So we have a question from a student named Bianca. Where does the title of the film come from and what does Kesipan mean if it does have a meaning? Licha, I think you can take this one on the yeah. meaning of Kesipan. Sure, if there isn't somebody else who can do better, but uh, Miriam Vero explained to me, uh, the director of the film, explained to me that Kasipan means 
it's your turn. So um, when she decided to make the film or throughout the film, she, she wasn't sure that she was gonna use that title uh, because she hadn't decided yet, but um, she worked very closely with Naomi Fontaine, who is the, um, the writer of the book, also called Kesipan. And Naomi took it as that title, Kesipan meant to Naomi, it's my turn to speak. It's my turn to say what I think. And uh, the director, Miriam Vero, during the movie started to realize that this was what, ha what was happening while they were filming. You know, they were passing the torch to each other all along. Like uh, Noemi would pass the torch to her and say, okay, it's your turn. You need to work with the, uh, the non-professional actors now. And, uh, and then Miriam was working with the, um, with the non-professional actors uh, all along also. And so she wanted them to shine. She really, she wanted to tell them, it's your turn. Show the world what, uh, who you are and what you can do. And, um, and take pride in what you're doing. And so uh, by the end of the filming, uh, she realized that that was a perfect title for the film also, because she felt that uh, it was uh, what, what, had ha what had happened throughout the whole filming of the film. They passed a torch to each other. And uh, also the film went from one distributor to another. Um, and that was another thing that she mentioned that uh, it was passed on it went, it went in the hands of many different people before it was actually made and before it was actually uh, created. And uh, she was so happy to say that um, she, uh, using the title Kesipan, at least made people uh, learn one Inu word and that it would, be, it would be with them and it would make them realize um, that, uh, that uh, it's important for us to have an open mind and to uh, to learn and to be exposed to, uh, to the uh, indigenous world. Thank you, Licha. Thank you so much. Uh, we have another question here, which I think, Frank, you would be able to answer this one. A student is wondering, if I want to study indigenous culture in the future after high school, what are my options and can I get a degree in indigenous studies? Frank, you're just on mute. Uh, when you finish high school, many universities offer a Bachelor of, of Arts in Indigenous Culture. There's one particular one at York University. There's one at Trent. There's one at Brock University. And if you're interested, after three years, you come out with a, a Bachelor in Indigenous Studies, and you can do your Master's in Indigenous Study at the various universities. There are actually quite a few universities who offer these programs, and I encourage you to, uh, if you're interested in learning more about them, you would uh, approach the different universities, but there are many um, possibilities for you after high school. I recommend it if you do. Thank you, Frank. Uh, this next question I think can go to Diane or Clay. What role can our education system play in supporting indigenous culture? Um, I'm, I could answer, and I'm sure Clayton will probably uh, add some other things, but I think uh, the best thing is to have a better understanding is to walk uh, also side by side with knowledge keeper or uh, elders, people that could really, because we have a lot of cultural appropriation and everything, so that way there's books that are written and we're not sure where they come from. And I think if you if you teamwork with indigenous people, and, and if you have questions, that might be a good start. And I'll let Clayton uh, yeah. say some words on that also. And I'm sure maybe Frank. Clay, you're on mute. Yeah, sorry. Um, well, uh, you know, I, I think that it's, it's, it's kind of kind of a parallel question there. And it, it kind of goes with, with, with reconciliation, the same thing, right? And so about friendly relations again, right? Just just understanding that and just looking at it and, and like, again, listening, right? And uh, working and, and, and just being respectful of these uh, different views and, and taking the time to, to, uh, to learn. And, uh, and here's the thing, uh, students, you're the first generation 
that I, I said this a lot, and, and I, I think people get tired of me saying this, but again, you are the first generation that's learning all of this, has an opportunity to learn, to go to university and learn, take native studies, et cetera, do all these things, to do everything, because your teachers, teachers didn't know anything about anything about indigenous point of views here, about the past, this very dark chapter in Canadian history, in Christian history, right, et cetera. And so going forward, Right, you, you you learn this, and you say, okay, well, let's. I want to I want to help. I want to support, but I don't so I don't want to over uh, uh, overtake or anything. I just want to be uh, uh, a supporter in, in learning and, and and everything. So that's important to know, and it takes a bit of um, understanding and to and just say, okay, right, and just remember that we're, <laughs> you know, this is the thing that we're all human beings before we're anything else, right. That's our race, that's our gender, that's our class, that's our citizenship, that's our age, that's our, all those other things, right? And when you approach it, just try to look through the lens, possibility as a human being. And I, what, that, what that does is give you a, a wider view of everything. Because if you think about it, all those other identities all have their prejudice and biased views, their limited views. And so, as Nishnabi people, right, we always identify as the people, right, the human beings, right? And, and so I think that's important and, and, and it can help you and, and to explore this. And, and you know, we don't, we're not asking uh, to, to join us, or right? Just that we want, we know what we want. We know what we need for our, our, our people, right? And all of these things. And so, but we're looking for that support, those those friendly relations again. So, they, like I said, those things go hand in hand. I think to that question, right? It's a very important question, and and I just say this. I know we're coming to the end, and it, well, you're probably asking, well, what's that got to do with the film? I think it's got everything to do with the film because the film kind of very subtly touches on that, and like the the language, the words, etc., the whole imagery. Uh, everything about you know the, the struggles these two these two wonder these two beings going through right finding themselves everything and and I, I thought the director did a very nice job on that right if any criticism I have of this film um, I thought the film was a little too long <laughs> it was it was a bit of, it was a long one because I've been sitting around you know we all been sitting around watching movies right and we all know movies are an hour and a half now 40 minutes if that so and that's the only criticism, but it, the way it was lit, the way it was like, the, the, the DP lit it beautifully. He captured the, you know, the environment, he captured everything. Uh, and, and I thought, and I was just like, I was very impressed with um, when I watched this film, even though, again, I'll go back to this, I don't speak French, right? So I had to sit there and read the subtitles, right? You know what I mean? <laughs> and so I sit there and I thought to myself, wow, this is captured, like most of them don't, catch me right and unfortunately that's the reality right with subtitle movies right and and so for most of us and so unless the the images are there right and it did it caught me and and again to see those uh, those the, the the children right the smiles on their faces right and 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 playing and everything and all of this and laughing and and the grandma and and, and i i must admit I love the scene where she goes into uh, to see her, her grandma. She's in the old tent, right? She's at the old the, the cook tent, they call them, right? And they, that's what they traveled in and all that. And she's, she'd rather sleep in that than in that house, right? And I, and I, and I, thought, that was, I thought that was just beautiful. And that's, that reminded me of my grandparents, right? Because they were, you know, when I went home to Alberta, they would rather sleep in a teepee, right? And all of that, and, and and when they went when they went on on um, hunting trips and things like that, and and it was such a a reminder of uh, those ways and everything. So I thought that was very I was impressed with that. So and again, that's uh, it. And hopefully that answered that question. But Absolutely. I wanted to say that before about the film, right? Lovely film. 
Definitely. Thank you. Thank you so much, Clay. So since we're, we're pressed for time, we just wanted to, this will end the, the question and answering. I just wanted to say thank you so much to our panel for answering those questions. Now, a couple students have just asked us where they can watch the film. If your class has not had the opportunity to watch the film, it is on our website at icff.ca slash youth. You can ask your teacher for the direct link and the password to watch the film if you haven't done done so already. Um, your teachers will also be providing you each with a survey link based on your experience on today's webinar. So definitely take a look and fill that out. And now I would just like to bring the floor back to Gina Juliana Morello, Superintendent of Student Success, for our final conclusion and panel. Thank you again so much for joining us here today. Gina, back to you. Thank you, Natalie. Students and staff, I'm sure that you've gained a much deeper understanding of the film by taking part in this wonderful event. I personally found the commentary of Clayton, Diane, Frank, and Derek so engaging. I cannot thank all of you enough for agreeing to be part of this event as panelists. I know how hard it is to answer questions on the spot. I'm glad I'm not you. Those were some tough questions and you did great. Um, to our friends at ICFF, I thank you, Joe and Licha, for all of your work preparing for this day, and Natalie and Mara and all the people and the technical staff that are behind the scenes who work tirelessly behind the scenes to ensure that things ran smoothly. Uh, teachers, I will be sending you a link for that survey, so look for my email. We want to learn from what you learned today and uh, maybe do better next time. And uh, teachers, I hope that you will continue the discussion with your students when you go back to your classroom and maybe even watch the movie again. I know I'm going to be watching it again tonight with new eyes now that I've heard all the insights from the panelists. It's always good to rewatch. And like you, Clayton, I have trouble sometimes with subtitles and, and I had to, you know, I do know a bit of French, but it's like high school French. So I had to really... <laughs> It would have been better if it wasn't Italian for me, I can tell you that much. Um, so this is the first time that we have used this platform to watch movies during the ICFF festival. This is actually our ninth year um, with ICFF, but students always, you know, uh, took the bus and went to one of the many locations. And this was the first time we explored this. Um, I think it worked out pretty well. We have instructional material there for teachers. I really encourage you to use that. And, um, you know, this is the first time that we've done the panel discussion and I personally am very pleased with it. So hopefully we can continue that. We wish you well and we hope to see you back next year as we continue to explore new ways to use film to enrich our learning and our lives. Thanks very much. Thank you. And uh, at this point, I'd like to also thank uh, Toronto Catholic District School Board. You know, as Gina just mentioned, uh, this is the ninth year in which we have collaborated, and it's been uh, indeed uh, a fruitful collaboration. Uh, thousands of uh, children and, and students uh, from elementary and secondary schools have enjoyed our films. And uh, I also want to thank Gina, of course, uh, uh, and Derek uh, as uh, superintendents for uh, their uh, prompt uh, response uh, to our, our proposal and their uh, wonderful, wonderful uh, support. And uh, of course, I want to thank uh, the panel, uh, Frank and Clay and Diane, because your insights uh, were indeed very, very significant. And, uh, and I'm sure the students will profit from them. And uh, of course, I want to thank uh, Director Barreau and uh, the, uh, of the film for putting together an amazing story on cinema. And uh, for uh, Nicholas, the uh, Director of Photography, for talking to us and telling us something about uh, filmmaking and uh, some of the one of the particular elements of film, which is, as he explained, quite uh, significant. And last but not least, certainly my uh, team of uh, ICFF uh, um, and, uh, you know, Natalie, Mara, Alicia, and then all the technical staff and, and everybody who has been very supportive. So thank you. And uh, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll do this uh, once more soon enough. 
Thank you, Joseph. Thank you, everyone. This now concludes today's panel discussion. We hope that you learned something new, students, and always remember to express your culture no matter what. Have a great afternoon, everybody, and remember to stay safe. Thank you very much. Good night.